closed captioning for the professors is provided in part by the Clifford Law Offices, a personal injury and wrongful death law firm in Chicago. Term limits. Some believe they could solve the current gridlock in Washington. Others argue they could lead to even greater problems. We'll be discussing the pros and cons of term limits today on The Professors. Hello, I'm Ted Williams. Joining us today on The Professors to talk about term limits are Nick Panamitros, a professor at Kennedy King College, and Lucene, a professor of law at the John Marshall Law School in Chicago, Connie Mixon, director of urban studies and professor of political science at Elmhurst College, and Adra Dima, a professor of political science at Chicago State University. Welcome, everyone. All right, so we're talking about uh, today this whole issue of term limits, and uh, we've had some wonderful conversations back in the green room about this. Uh, I'd like to hear from, before we even get into uh, the pros and cons, I think, of term limits today, uh, and we're going to probably talk a little bit about federal term limits, state term limits, that sort of thing. I'd like to hear a little bit about the history of term limits uh, from someone here. Let's uh, start our conversation with the precedent historically from four term limits, uh, whether it be in the United States or outside of the United States. Who'd love to start us off in, uh, with that conversation? Connie? Well, term limits date back to ancient Athens and ancient Rome. Mm -hmm. um, the Council of 500 in ancient Athens limited its entire membership to one year. The <laughs> Roman Republic's magistrates only allowed their magistrates to serve for one year, and they couldn't serve again for another 10 years. When you look at the history of the United States, most of the original 13 states in their state constitutions impose some form of term limits. And our first governing document, the Articles of Confederation, actually had term limits in the Articles of Confederation. Mm -hmm. Now, our current constitution does not impose any form of term limits. Bringing us up to more recent times, what we saw starting in about 1990 in the United States was a huge wave of states enacting term limits through their own state mm -hmm. constitutions, and some states even impose term limits on their members of Congress, their House representatives and their senators. Sure. Those were subsequently ruled unconstitutional. Absolutely. And this was part of this whole 1990s wave. Even the Republican contract with America in the 1990s mm -hmm. proposed some form of term limits. Sure. So it was something that really caught on in the 1990s. Yeah, it did. And, and so, let's, so let's fast forward. Thank you very much. I think it's very, very important information. I'm sure we'll get, obviously, more history in here. But the reason why we're talking about this today is that there are polls that show that the issue of term limits has uh, gotten basically 70, 80 percent of public support. Mm -hmm. So it's very popular, I think, in theory. Now, in practice, it hasn't been as popular because there hasn't been as much of a push in recent years for it. But why do you think people are so adamant about this issue of term limits today? I mean, that, that really is a question for anyone, but why do you think this is an issue we're even having a show on today? Why is it important? Ted, I don't know that we necessarily have a, uh, uh, people are adamant to have term limits. Mm -hmm. I think that, uh, you know, it's a variation in, in the political, in a political architecture to have uh, term uh, limits, but term limits don't come without a price. Mm -hmm. And obviously our, the way we do it right now without term limits for the most part uh, comes with a price. I think you have to just look at the benefits and the, uh, and the bads that, that come about sure. from that. So I think you need to look to see what's wrong uh, before you could say that people are d definitely adamant. Well, I would, I would make the argument that, and I know we're probably going to talk about this more, um, that there is public support for term limits. I think we, that we can pretty mm -hmm. much agree on that. Uh, Excuse the question me, that's has been, for the legislature and for local governments. Yes. I don't see much support for term limits on the executive level because most of the post-Civil War state constitutions <coughs> imposed term limits on, for instance, their governors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I remember when George Wallace could have only two terms sure. and he wanted a third, he and so he wife. put his wife into <laughs> yeah, office, sure. you remember? And, he, and she carefully let him be her, her chief of staff. Yes. I mean, that was... Mm -hmm. It was a sad joke. But but yeah. there are over 30 states that have term limits for their executive offices. Right, executive and offices. Yes, okay. yes. And so, but, and also... And when we're limited, our, 30, our president's limited states. by term limits due to the 22nd Amendment Absolutely. to the Constitution, which was enacted after FDR had served four terms. Mm -hmm. He died during his fourth term. Sure. But no president prior to FDR 
has served more than two terms. They followed the George Washington model. Yeah. And when the 22nd Amendment limited the president to two terms or 10 years. Interesting, when Congress proposed that mm -hmm. amendment, they didn't even talk about proposing term limits for mm -hmm. themselves. It was just on the executive uh, Professor Dima, you were saying? Yeah, I was just uh, responding to her point. 37 states in the union have term limits for their governors. So term limits tend to be popular when uh, the electorate are dissatisfied with mm -hmm what they are going on. So the support level is fluid in the sense that when they are mad with what is happening in Washington, they propose term limits. And when they are somehow OK with what is going on, the support for term limit is less than it has ever been. But it was in the process of this up and down support for term limit that uh, Thomas Foley, uh, an otherwise very good speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, was ousted in a primary election in Spokane, Washington. And uh, I think that is the downside of this. Uh, sure. So, but, go ahead, Nick. I was going to say, though, but term limits come with a price. Every time you have a term limit, you guarantee a lame duck. And during a lame duck uh, period, a whole term, knowing that you're not going to run again, begs the question, is this person going to still act in the best interest of the people that put him into office? Okay, and so I think actually, that's one, I think that's a risk. It is with, a risk, uh, and limits. it's a very good point. I'd like to, because I, let's, you know, I, I, <laughs> I'm actually interested in this part of the conversation, because having talked to all of you, uh, there is, it seems to be, um, support, I, well, I think there seems to be opposition on, certain, on a certain level to term limits. And I'd like to hear some arguments against term limits now, because I'd like to kind of have that conversation. We tend to believe that term limits are a panacea, but you guys, many folks at the table are saying that they're not. So please explain why. Okay, let me begin by saying that term limits are inherently undemocratic in the sense that the voters have the choice to reject the people who have been there for a variety of reasons. So if you impose term limits, you are limiting not only the people in the office, but also the voters' choice to select whom they like. OK. OK. Mm -hmm. and, and I'd like to ask the question, what is wrong with uh, someone being in office three, three, two, three times, four? Uh, I know on rare occasions there has been uh, <clears throat> certain politicians that have been in office for decades. Sure. But that's far and few between. Mm -hmm. Most of them. Nick, I gotta uh, ask don't. you. I, I gotta yeah. stop you there. I yeah. gotta ask you what's right with it. I mean, really. Well, if you look at look at Congress, right. okay, the the popularity, the approval rating of Congress is at a historic low. Ninety percent of Congress is reelected. The power of incumbency in, e in each election, the power of incumbency is is tremendous. Now, let me say this clearly. I am very much when I look at this question, I look at what ultimately will produce uh, a free democracy in which there's a lot of participation, and I just as much as I'm not ideologically married to term limits, I really have a hard time, I think, uh, believing the arguments against it. So when you look at, for instance, okay, you look at the, uh, the top largest cities in the, in the country, uh, nine out of 10 of those cities have term limits for their city council members uh, and or their mayors, and one does not. And guess <laughs> which one Chicago. that is, right? Mm -hmm. It's Chicago. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to recognize the level of corruption, the level, level of political uh, apathy that New exists York in Chicago. New York City has mayors who are term limited. Yes. And I think the most recent mayor yeah. has lifted the he term sure limit. Did. I mean, but people so come were on, upset are about there that. term limits in New York City or not? Well, they right. are, what? but, but there, were, there was a large number of people that were upset about the fact that Bloomberg did, did that. And so but, but, they but thought Bloomberg, it was a shot at democracy. You're talking Bloomberg about, is not the only mayor in New York that mm -hmm. has served three terms. There's LaGuardia served three terms, Scotch served three terms, and their third terms were disastrous in, in each case. There's, yeah. there's two issues here. One is, I think, uh, we're talking, uh, uh, implying that perhaps there's corruption involved, you know, that someone's in power for a long time, but someone that's been in power one term as opposed to three, after three terms, two, three terms, you're seasoned. You mentioned Chicago. Chicago is a very well-run uh, city. Forget about... Uh, the jokes, but see, <laughs> oh, I think Connie. Oh, man. Chicago is a <laughs> very study. <laughs> Chicago is a very well managed city. I, I think Connie, most like people would, would, would yeah, agree. Right. And also, I said, you have politicians that become seasoned. One term, you know, you're a beginner and you're just learning the ropes, and all of a sudden you have to leave. Now you're a lame duck, also. Nick, but you know, Nick, I, we, I, since 1970. 
31 of 50 aldermen have been convicted mm -hmm. and sent to prison in the city of Chicago. But, Chicago but you're trying, you're is saying not cause and effect that because there's no term, term limits. No, you I'm have not corruption. saying that. Uh, what in fact, why are you no. bringing it up? <laughs> I, think, I think it was about You're the, the, well city. Now, the, the point. point that I want to make is that in the 1990s, there was a rush to enact term limits mm -hmm. in the states. 21 legislatures um, throughout the United States enacted term limits. Today, we, six of them were termed unconstitutional mm -hmm. or they were repealed. But we have 15 states today that still have term limits that have been effect, in, in effect since the 1990s. Mm -hmm. So we have over 20 years of data to look at. My issue with the term limits has to do with their effectiveness. Mm -hmm. And this gets Who's to the, the, the limits, the term whether the limits, limits, the, whether the the limits okay. are actually effective. And this gets to the question, Ted, that I think you hinted at a few minutes ago. What exactly is the public policy problem? that we are trying to hmm. cure with term limits. Yes. And mm -hmm. is term limits, are, is that the correct remedy? Absolutely. Because I might argue, looking at the effectiveness of term limits over the past 20 years, that they haven't been very, very effective. Mm -hmm. And maybe campaign finance reform sure. will be and the public. Okay, so maybe we the, can agree on this, that, and, and here's where I, I fall into this, this argument. Term limits, I do not believe, are a magic bullet solution. But I think term limits, along with campaign finance reform, along with a number of other measures, mm -hmm. I think can help to change this culture. And I think that honestly, and I've got to be very honest about this, you know, the only people who really don't want term limits are politicians. When Senator Jim DeMint put this... That this, is this, wrong. I, I, I believe me that. right here, and I've never run for office. Well, okay. Well, maybe, maybe you will <laughs> one day. I mean, <laughs> Thank you. No. Maybe you're a politician in the future. She's right? my law professor, so yeah. i got to vote but, for her. No but, choice. Go ahead. Go ahead. Please. No, no. I mean... Uh, as I told you before, I think one of the things that people don't realize is the power of incumbency is Absolutely. not just the power of incumbency. It's the fact that for the, in Congress in particular, as you well know, mm -hmm. Uh, most work is done in committees, and as long as they have a seniority system in which the uh, chairmanship of the committees and the ranking membership on the committees by the minority can be based on seniority, that is where they get an enormous amount of power. And I've known congressmen to come back and say, look, I've been here f uh, 16 years. I'm now becoming the chairman of a fairly powerful committee. Do you now want to vote me out of office? Mm -hmm. And uh, frankly, I, I, I think that what we're what, what is actually, I'm going to have to say something good about them. The House Republicans in the U.S. House have voluntarily, through their caucus, put a term limit on the chairmanships for the House Republicans. Nobody else does that. And I've often thought, when I've talked with people about term limits, that that is something we could talk about when you uh -huh. talk about reform, sure. not the old silly thing about let's go with campaign finance reform, which is perfectly silly. What you really do is start talking about the, inc uh, the power of the incumbency of the chairmanships, because in Congress, the incredible thing is that everything is done in committees. So you have three or four people who are making an enormous amount of the uh, decisions. And Everybody says, well, I don't care who the chairman of a committee is. Mm -hmm. When I hear that, I know it's a person who really doesn't know anything about and, Congress. And, and what's wrong with term limits? If the constituents are like that person, and they keep on re-electing him. This is a democracy. At the end of the day, oh. what's wrong with that? Well, Nick, because Come we on. know for a fact that these congressmen, many of the congressmen, and I, and I will speak very clearly about Congress, because I've thought about this. I've worked for a congressman. The reality is people are not necessarily voting for them because they think they're doing a good job. They're voting for them because they have a treasure chest of money. They have access to resources. They have access to the media. And people typically are Ill illiterate politically. But that, and that's the, the only person thing. that they know. So yeah. that's that, why they get real well, that, well, Hang on a second. That, that, that same problem exists when you pick a new candidate. He's going to get a whole bunch of people. They're looking at him. Hey, when this guy's in office, he's going to help me out. He's going to yeah, have money. But the he's powers have of incumbency, 90% of incumbents <laughs> run again, 90% win. They get reelected. Well, but I come to this problem in a different way. Mm -hmm. We already have in the system an inherent term limit yeah, imposed elections. by the term mm -hmm. called elections. So I don't think that it is necessary to impose other limits. See, the challenge yeah. I have with elections as the inherent term limit is this. Number one, and, and if you think about even running for office in our local area, the Democratic, established Democratic Party and the established Republican Party have an inherent advantage. It, it, let's just be very real. Mm -hmm. 
Just you by cannot, the number of names on the ballot. The number of names on the ballot. You can't ballot. be able to get on the ballot unless you're within these groups. If you're not, uh, you know, basically, you know, um, connected with the parties, you can't even get into uh, any of these offices. So the idea that elections by themselves would, uh, I think, give what we're talking about, I just don't think it works. Okay. And I think it's been proven o okay. not Okay, now you have opened up another area of inquiry, which is the role of the redistricting in determining elections before we vote. Yeah. As is the case in Texas, you cannot win as a Democrat when they control the House. They were able to set up district that was safe for Republicans, yeah. uh -huh. which means that no matter what we do, we could not elect other people. We <coughs> could not. But that's a different <coughs> set of issues that's a to, yeah. term, to One term of the limit. With term limits that we don't think about very often is that when you impose term limits, you have a very inexperienced legislature, and that inherently shifts power to the executive branch. And it also increases the role of lobbyists. One of the reasons for term limits was to decrease the role of lobbyists, sure. but instead you have this whole bunch of inexperienced legislators mm -hmm. that are then turning to lobbyists and saying, how do I vote? Mm -hmm. What do I do? Tell me about this issue. Right. Because they don't have that knowledge. They don't have that They're experience. Not They're not experience. Experience. Think that's a, that's Unless a you point. have a strong legislative, because we're talking about legislative term mm -hmm. limits now. We started with executive, but we've gone to legislative, which is where most of the action is. I was a legislative staff member for a number of years, and I trained the new people, mm -hmm. basically. They came to me, because they right. didn't know. Right. And quite frankly, I've always said this, that uh, you're going to, it's, it's either the lobbyists or the staffs yeah. mm -hmm. who are going to train them. I have a question. I've been a lobbyist, yeah, I have I've a been question. a staff right. member. Right. Sure, we sure, both sure. know that. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so you want term limits. Mm -hmm. How many term limits do we give them? Well, that's, I mean, that, we can, we can well, wrestle I mean, through that question two, in ten, variety. Five, there are 50 a lot, years, There are years? a lot of proposals on the table, but let's just take the most because obvious, that's important let's also. take the most obvious example. Right. The President of the United States can only run twice. Now, we're, and there's a reason for that, and there's not this overwhelming opposition to this, but we're looking at that and we're saying, oh, yeah, well, the President can only run twice, but the Mayor should be able to run 20 times, the Governor should be able to run 20 times, the legislature, legislators, and Connie, to your point, I actually do agree that it does, would increase the, the power of the uh, lobbyists, but I don't know if that argument alone is enough for me to say then, consequently, mm -hmm. then let's throw out term limits altogether. I'm looking at the cost benefit. I don't think anybody anybody objects to the 22nd Amendment, no. but I'll tell you one so reason why. Would why. Of course sure. it was the Republicans' posthumous revenge on Against Franklin FBI. Roosevelt. But at the time they put it in, television su suddenly became a really big factor. Mm -hmm. Any president can immediately go on television. They can go on tonight and preempt Absolutely. all of the programming and the, everybody will give in. Quite frankly, that is a power that no mayor has, n uh, no governor has. Nobody else has that except the president of the United States. So that is a most a very unusual, unusual situation. Mm -hmm. And he has many inherent, pow inherent powers, sure. so uh, there could be much... Much abuse well, there are many level. people that have believed that the mayor of Chicago for many years, is, you know, there's all been these conversations about, especially when the dailies were in office, and they were just as powerful as the president in some level. Now, I know that's a joke. Mm -hmm. But what's wrong with but power? They, they made the city, you know, uh, uh, cosmopolitan. Because, because power is corrupting by its nature. But you're you're we, saying we that this. just because you don't have term limits and you have different people that it would have been better. That's the implication okay. you're making. Yes. You and, know, Chicago's a whole other show, well, I mean, which Chicago I would a great love city. to be part of. I don't, I don't but see that. Getting, I, I, you know, part of the problem is that one of the very basic principles of a representative democracy mm -hmm. is that you have to have citizens that are engaged and informed. Sure. And they're just simply not in the United States today. When we can barely muster a 50% <clears throat> turnout for presidential elections, it gets even lower mm -hmm. for other offices. And I think one of the cures that we can look at, and maybe there's a whole bunch of cures, maybe it's term limits, maybe it's campaign finance reform, but one of the main things we can do is we can put civic education back in our K through 12 schools. Sure. It's not there. You're right, and, 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 and I think it's, it's, it's one of the reasons why we have these problems. Let me, let me share this with you. Thomas Jefferson said, to we need term limits to prevent every danger which might arise to American freedom by continuing too long in office. George Washington, it, it uh, introduced self-imposed term limits and really set the precedent for presidents only serving two terms. If you look at what all the founding fathers were doing, this whole question of freedom and the whole question of sort of um, power that was contained, that was limited, limited government, limited power, 
to me, it, it makes so much sense that term limits would be within that, that conversation. Right, but they did not they did put not. term you're right. they limits did not put in, in the, the United States and you're Constitution. Absolutely right. They did not. You're right. So and forget what, that. And George Washington, <laughs> who, was, who, who could have ran again on his own, <laughs> termed, his, you know, sure. termed himself. Yeah. So um, if you have to restrict and deny the voters a choice, mm -hmm. Just because they didn't put it in the Constitution does not mean they did not support it. It does not mean they did not believe that states then should therefore do well, it to protect Well, the Constitutional the democracy. Convention, there was a lot of uh, talk, so they were you know, <laughs> working on that thing for a long time, so I'm sure there was plenty of talk on that. Let me make the point. I think today's politicians, unlike yesteryears, do not have the kind of restraint that Washington had himself. You would understand that he oh, ran, more he, he, he took him. the second term against his will. You will look at presidential inaugural speeches. His second term inaugural was the shortest in the history of the United States. Mm -hmm. It's more like 34 words mm -hmm. and say I'm out of here. But doctor, what are, but they, what are you saying though when you're saying that? The point I'm making is that today, having the public elected office has become careerism and that is what mm -hmm. is happening people take this as a career rather than a service Absolutely. they want to be but in there and in the process they create fiefdoms they create problems that they themselves cannot solve within the system but so i think to his credit there is there needs to be some understanding that there is corruption within the system. Okay. And so it that's is that corruption it, it is very difficult. It is very difficult to solve the corruption that these people have created within the system, which is why you had President Obama said recently that you can't change Washington from within. Yeah. So we cannot ignore that point. But the point to be made is how are we going to resolve this issues outside of term limits and other processes that are in place. But like I said earlier, you're saying that these politicians act corruptly. That's, that's, that's basically what, what's at that issue That goes here. without saying. Okay, so now you guarantee every guy, you give them a term limit, you say you're going to be in here, you don't have to worry about getting reelected, they don't care. You don't think that those lame ducks are going to act uh, in a corrupt manner? Sure. But Which is precisely the, why I say thing. we have to find a way of resolving these things holistically it's rather than just right. looking I'm not at the term. It's, it's beyond exactly. the corruption issue. It's the notion that the, the Greeks thought of citizen legislators, that people would come in, they would work for a period of time. And, and we know that that is not worked out even in the areas that have term limits. But the principle, I believe, is still the same. It's not just corruption. It also is public access to democracy. It's also, it has to do with a, a variety of other issues. And I think when you look at it in its totality, you look at the issue of term limits, and I, I just, on a bunch of different levels, I think they help to foster a better democracy rather than a, wor a worse one. Right. A ancient Athens was much smaller, and remember, only uh, male property owners could, sure. could, could participate. Not only that, I don't think they so were paid good... either. Huh? I don't think they were paid either. So mm -hmm. if you took and a year work. off, you, you, you couldn't, you, if you took a year off, you were taking a year from your work yeah. in order to serve. You were taking a year off but from an even, income. But these they citizen didn't even legislators, work. Ted, that mm -hmm. you talk about, after they've served, they don't go back to being the pharmacist oh, or the no, lawyer. They, they, they find they, they run for another the, office or they, or they find another lobbyist. government position the or they yes. become a they lobbyist. Become yes. lobbyist yeah. Absolutely. And, and that's a whole other another challenge as well. Um, so what can we do then about, if, if not term limits, what can we do about corruption in politics? Because I think this is, you know, this is, this is speaking to this Illinois larger issue. Illinois has a corruption tax of $500 million mm -hmm. that's been tracked that it costs the citizens of Illinois $500 million per year mm -hmm. in corruption. And that's just the indictments and the convictions that yeah. can be tracked. And for every one of those, there's many more. Yes. And Connie, I got to say this, and I have to say this about what Nick said, and these are seasoned politicians doing this, right? <laughs> we don't want the inexperienced ones, we want the seasoned ones, because the seasoned ones know how to be more corrupt. A little more slick. Yes. <laughs> But anyway, what else, what else do you, you think can be done? If not term limits, what do you suggest that we do about many of the challenges that we've, that we've talked about today in, in the political process? Okay, what we, is it you we have... want? Tell me what your goal is, and please don't give me a civics 101 answer <coughs> about, I want good government. Okay. I'm not buying but that I one. But I do want good government. You know what kind <laughs> of government? You want? Sure, I would say, and I, I want good government, and I would explain to you what that means. I want government that when people go to vote, they know that their vote actually matters. They know that they are not looking at people like, and I, oh gosh, like, like a Mike Madigan, for 
for instance, who's been in office God knows how long, that runs pretty much the entire it's legislature. It's either 1971 or 73, I've forgotten okay. which. But the point is, is that why, what is wrong with someone like that having a period of time and then getting out? I don't understand that. And I do not understand how that does not contribute to good government. It does not increase. If you look at the 2008 presidential election, the reason why the turnout was so great was not just because of Barack Obama. People always make it Barack Obama. It was because there was no incumbent. And when there's no incumbent, people go, oh my goodness, my vote might actually matter. And that's what happens when we have term limits. And that is good government. But Ted, every president, if you look at Clinton, what he did in, in the last months of his, uh, of his uh, uh, term, how many people he gave amnesty to, sure. and, and uh, same thing with Bush <laughs> and all of them. I mean, that's a huge corruption. Now but, imagine every politician happen, being a lame duck. But that would happen if he decided to run for six terms, then but in you, the sixth term he said, I'm not going to be here anymore. You, so in the sixth term rather than the second term, I'm going to do all those but things. But you minimize it. Problem. No, you minimize it because a lot of politicians do lose. Term limits says every single what guy. What politicians 100, lose? What incumbents lose? 99% of them win. They, they win. They win. They win. They they win. They, they see, if, if, if Father if Bush, if, 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 Clint, if Clinton yes, had run for the third lose. term, yes. I bet the you my every dollar he would have won. Well, Johnson didn't run again, but anyhow, you know, there are some, but it's the minority. But but terms, term limits guarantees every single guy. I am a lame duck. I could do whatever I want, and if that evil is there, as you said, which I'm not going to say I disagree with you you are going to have it exercised during a lame, a full four years. And also with term limits, a lame duck losing an election, like with the, the president, they did that in just two months. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you gave them four years to do it. Okay, you, you asked a fundamental question that deserves our attention. That is, how are we going to resolve the issue of corruption in our political system? I think we begin by increasing participation especially participation among those people on the margins who are affected most by corruption that goes on in our legislatures and on the state level. The second thing we need to do is to re reduce the influence of money in the system. I know that we cannot do that now with the new Supreme Court ruling that you can give all you have to give. It's going to be extremely difficult. <sighs> yeah. We have to form interest groups like Common Cause that have been fighting for campaign reform uh, for years and years and until the Supreme Court ended their effort in that unfortunate ruling that we are talking about. Without this, without the, uh, the influence of money in the system, you cannot remove corruption, even if you limit them to one day. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, you know, and you're absolutely right, and it's a great place to stop. This has been a very good conversation, a very rich conversation. Uh, I do hope that it, this, is, this goes beyond just a conversation. I do hope that, uh, that our, um, the electorate begins to think about these questions and that, you know, whether you're for term limits or, or not, it doesn't necessarily matter. But the, the issue of um, the lack of participation in our political process, I think, is the over, all, uh, overarching issue we're talking about. And I think we can all agree on that. And I think we've got to take a variety, a plethora of uh, efforts and measures to try to fix that. And I hope that we can move a step closer towards that. So I've really enjoyed this. Thank you all very much uh, today. Uh, and we will uh, hopefully do this again soon. That's our show for today. Uh, join us again next week for another edition of The Professors.